In our paper in Alzheimer's Research and Therapy entitled The Path to 2025, we analyzed the likelihood that we will have new therapies for Alzheimer's disease by 2025. That is the date that President Obama and the National Alzheimer Project Act identified as when we should have a cure for Alzheimer's disease or meaningful therapy for Alzheimer's disease. What we found out in counting backwards from 2025 is that a drug must currently be in phase two in order to be approved by the FDA by 2025. That means that all of the drugs that could possibly be available by then are already in phase two of development or further along. We have a high failure rate in the pipeline, so this analysis shows that it's likely that we would have only one or a very few compounds given the current long duration of drug development by 2025. Drug development in Alzheimer's disease has proven to be particularly complex because we have underestimated the difficulty of Alzheimer's disease. We didn't know how many different proteins are accumulating in the brain, how there's also inflammation in the brain, there's oxidative injury in the brain, there's mitochondrial injury in the brain. So we are just now beginning to appreciate the true complexity of the disease and therefore to address it with our many therapies. And this is going to be the step that takes us forward into more rapid, more efficacious development of drugs. As we think about clinical trials for Alzheimer's disease, the things that should be given high priority because they can have maximum impact are number one, recruitment. We need to get more patients into trials faster. That is the single most powerful way of accelerating Alzheimer's disease drug development. Another very important initiative is the development of central IRBs. Right now, every institution feels obligated to review each protocol. That represents hundreds of reviews across the country and tremendous redundancy. And in some times, it, it even erodes the science of the clinical trial. So we need to move towards a central IRB that can approve these trials efficaciously, quickly, and making sure uh, that our patients are safe. Those are the principal functions of the IRB, and we can do that with a central IRB much faster than we can do it with the individual IRBs in the system we currently use. As we've come to understand Alzheimer's disease better, we've also increased the types of patients that we are bringing into clinical trials. For example, we're now doing prevention trials in people who have to be cognitively normal, but we, are, we know that they are at high risk for the development of Alzheimer's disease. They then are randomized to drug or placebo to see whether we can prevent the occurrence of cognitive decline. That's a brand new population for us of cognitively normal people. They're not health seeking, they're not going to doctors because they're normal. We're also doing tests on patients who have mild cognitive impairment to see whether we can stop the development of the dementia syndrome of Alzheimer's disease in patients who are only minimally impaired. So these represent new populations that we need to attract into the clinical trial enterprise. The field of Alzheimer's disease is responding to these challenges. For example, we at the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health are part of the Global Alzheimer Platform, or GAP. And GAP is systematically addressing recruitment for Alzheimer's disease, national IRBs for Alzheimer's disease, involving insurance companies with referral of patients to clinical trials, many innovative mechanisms that will accelerate the drug development process with our goal being to shorten the development of each drug by a minimum of two years. So GAP is an example of new initiatives within the Alzheimer field that promise to reform drug development.